Good evening everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome back to our session for this evening. Sorry about yesterday. If you tried to tune in yesterday, I was unable to log to get in, but we are making it up for today. And if you are not in, you can still tune in afterwards. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm going to continue to share and uh, those who come late or are not here, they can watch it later on at their own convenience. But it's so important that we understand this message today. It will be a blessing to each one of you. I'm going to open in prayer and then uh, start sharing. Welcome, welcome to those who are logging in. You're most welcome. God bless. Hallelujah. Welcome, Rachel. God bless you for being early. God bless those who are logging in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to start praying. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to honor your mighty God because of who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are here with us this evening. Father, because the topic is something that is close to your heart and that, Lord, you desire for us, my God, to know this topic and to understand it, Lord. And Father, as we come together to break this bread of life, share with one another, we invite the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. Let the Holy Spirit come down and teach us your word this evening. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. People are logging in. We are going to uh, start the session going and um, just keep on inviting others to join with us. And those who are not able, they can listen to this afterwards. Keep sharing it with others so that those who missed out will still be able to listen to it later. Praise the Lord. I just want us to talk about Jesus, our high priest. Jesus, our high priest. I believe that in this hour, in this season, we need to be anchored upon Christ, the solid rock of our foundation. I was just singing in my heart, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand because all other ground is is sinking sand. So based on that, we are going to look at Christ, our high priest, because I believe, as scriptures say, the people that know their God shall do exploits for the kingdom of God. If we will understand who Christ is and how he relates to us and how he works on our behalf, you know, our hope, our strength, it all anchors on our knowledge and understanding of Christ as our high priest. We know him as our savior. All of us know Jesus as our savior. Most of us know him as our deliverer. Others know him as their provider. Others know him as their healer. But tonight we want to know him as our high priest. We want to know him as our high priest and to understand his role in our lives as a high priest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our faith, our hope must be anchored in our understanding of Christ, our high priest, in our understanding of the great love that God has for us. When we understand these things, then we become the people that know they are God and we will be positioned to do exploits for our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We know that Satan is our accuser. He is the accuser of the brethren. Whilst Christ on the other hand, fights to justify us before the Father in heaven. Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, you know, I love this scripture. 
It says, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Other uh, versions say we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are in Christ. Christ is in the Father and we've been raised as Christ has been raised up. We've been raised up with him as Christ sat on the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. We are set with him on the right hand of the Father in heavenly realms. Hallelujah. What a powerful, powerful position for us to be in. Now Hebrews 4, 14 tells us Jesus is our great high priest. He is still working on our behalf today. You know, this is where our confidence rests in knowing that we were never left as orphans we were never left alone to fend for ourselves we were never left alone to war with the devil in our own strength thus the bible says not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord this is our confidence that we have a high priest in the heavenly places right in the in the throne room of god who is speaking on our behalf, who is fighting on our behalf, who is presenting our case before God. He is our advocate. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus was born a king. Before he became a savior, he was a king. That's why a king was born in Bethlehem. And the three wise men knew the star was telling them a king was going to be born. He was born a king before he was a savior. And then he became a, a priest. So he is a king and he is a priest. That's what makes us a royal priesthood because being a king he is royal and then he became a priest and we after him became the royal priesthood 1 peter 2 9 says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people remember the word says you did not choose me i chose you that's why peter says you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood after christ the king of kings and the lord of lords therefore you are a peculiar people around the people that see you the people that know you they think you are strange because you are peculiar hallelujah john 1 1 tells us christ is the eternal word who was in the beginning with god Christ is the eternal word. He was in the beginning with God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is called the root of King David because Mary and Joseph were both descendants of King David. So we are a royal priesthood because Christ was king and priest and everything that he has he has given to us he says as the father gave me i'm giving you as the father sent me i'm sending you what is mine is yours so god has bestowed upon us this great great favor this great great ministry of being royal priesthood we are a royal priesthood. We are a priesthood. Every single one of us, we are priests unto our God. Now, the book of Hebrews says so much about Christ being our high priest. Hebrews 2 verse 17. Jesus is our merciful and faithful high priest. He is merciful and he is faithful. Hallelujah. We know faithful is one of his names and he cannot deny himself. He is merciful and he is faithful. Hebrews 4, 14 and 15 
shows he is a compassionate high priest. He is compassionate towards our weaknesses. He is compassionate towards our, our failures. Because verse 15 says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. That's why we say when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Because his strength is made perfect in my in our weaknesses, he is our high priest. Hebrews 5 verse 9 says, Christ is the source of eternal salvation. In him we live, we move, we have our being. In him we have eternal life. For whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. So Christ is our high priest. He is our savior. He is our deliverer. He is our healer. But tonight we are looking at him as a high priest. We are not looking at him as our, our provider, our healer. We know those things, but we need to understand his role as a high priest in our lives we need to understand his role as a high priest hebrews 1 8 sorry hebrews 8 verse 1 says now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum of it all we have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven our high priest is set on the right hand of the throne of God in heaven. He is our representative. Think about it. He is our representative in heaven. That's why David would say, who do I have in heaven but you? He is our representative in heaven. We are his ambassadors here on earth, but he represents us in heaven. When our accuser goes before the Father to accuse us, Jesus, our advocate, he rises up to, to be our lawyer, to be our advocate, to fight our corner, to speak on our behalf. Hallelujah. That's really exciting to know that you have someone out there, right there in the Holy of Holies, fighting your corner for you. But now, hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. He is our advocate. He is a mediator. He fights our corner before God. You know, this is why we can say there is now therefore no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because he fights our corner even when we are wrong, when we have done wrong and the enemy comes and say, look, They've messed up again. Look what they've done. Jesus will fight our corner and say, I paid the price. I paid the price. I paid the price. And we walk away justified. We walk away justified. That does not mean that we can then just continue in sin and enjoy sin because we believe that we are justified. Actually, in reality, the more we understand these things, the more we hate sin, the more we, we love purity, the more we love holiness, the more we want to be closer to God because he is holy. We desire to be holy even as he is holy. The Bible says Jesus ever lives to make intercession for you and for me. Hallelujah. Can you believe it? Have you ever worried that no one is praying for you? Well, you don't need to worry anymore. You don't need to worry because Jesus is your high priest. He is forever making intercession for you. The Bible says his eyes run to and fro, watching over the righteous, and his ears are always attentive to their cry. That means you are never alone. You don't have to have an orphan spirit because you will never be an orphan. You are never alone. Jesus, your high priest, he is there all the time fighting your corner. 
doing things for you, watching out over you, removing snares in your pathway. He is there pleading with God on your behalf, standing between you and the wrath of God, standing between you and the anger of God. That's the ministry of the high priest. But that is not in that is not all. That is not all. You know, every time I read the, uh, the book of Matthew 25 about those who ran out of oil, I was always worried. What if I run out of oil? What's going to happen? What if I run out of oil the, the, just an hour before Jesus Christ comes? Just uh, maybe 10 minutes before he comes. Oh, you know, but I stopped worrying when I realized that as it was in the Old Testament, the priest was responsible for the candlesticks. He was responsible for pruning them and cutting off the wicks and putting oil and ensuring that the candlesticks were burning day and night, that their light never ran out. And I'm confident that Jesus is still doing that ministry in heaven as my priest. As seen in the book of Revelation, he is standing in the midst of the candlesticks. And those candlesticks are representing the seven churches. So he is still our priest, he prunes us, doesn't he? He prunes us. Why does he prune us? So that our light never burns out. He prunes us so that we burn brighter. And because we are connected to him, we abide in the vine. We are engrafted in the vine. We get the oil automatically. You know, when you see a branch in a tree, the branch never worries about running out of food supplements because it comes from the main stem of the tree and the branch is just a recipient and we are the branches he is the vine and we are recipients of the oil that flows through him therefore there is no way we can ever run out of oil there is no way we are going to run out of oil the only time you will run out of oil is when you are cut off from the vine when you are cut off from his presence then your store the flow the automatic or the natural flow will st will cease but as long as we are connected to christ there is an automatic flow of oil from him to us that is everlasting that never runs dry there is a source that never runs out it never runs dry therefore you have no fear if you are in christ you will never run out of oil you will never be caught without oil hallelujah that comforted my heart all i have to do is to ensure i remain in christ is to ensure i abide in him so that i never run out of light so that my oil never ceases and my light never stops burning you can talk to people who have backslidden they feel it, the cutting of that spirit. They feel it, the drying up of the wellspring. They feel the dryness that they have because they are cut off from the source of light. And as long as we are in Christ, our oil never runs out because he is our source and he is our reservoir. He is the cup that never, ever runs dry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Jesus is our advocate. He is our intercessor and he stands between us and God's anger that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us in our faults. He sees the righteousness of Christ. That's why we are putting on Christ because when we have put on Christ, God sees us as righteous regardless of who, what we are doing. We are that's why sometimes I think lack of understanding is what is creating problems even in the body of Christ because we expect perfection from people because we think 
When we say people are righteous, we think people are perfect. That, that's not the case. The righteousness is given to us without merit. We don't deserve it. It's by the grace of God. But that, that doesn't mean the individual is perfect. The individual will still make mistakes. The individual will still fall and rise again. But the righteousness of Christ is their covering. It never goes away until you choose to denounce Christ, until you choose to walk away from Christ. That's the scripture say, a righteous man may fall seven times, yet he will bounce back again because you have an intercessor who is interceding for you, who is praying for you because Jesus promised that whatever has been committed into his hand, he will never lose it unless he chooses to walk away. He will never let go of you until you say, Jesus, leave me alone. I don't want you anymore. And then he will respect your wishes and he will leave you alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The truth, the Bible says the truth will set us free. It is in the knowledge of the word of God. It is in the understanding of the scriptures that we find our rightful positioning in Christ. That's where our humility comes from because we understand that our righteousness is imputed upon us. We have not earned it and we have not deserved it. Therefore, I cannot look at another person and judge them and think that I'm more righteous than them. They are because all of us got the same righteousness imputed upon us by our Savior Jesus Christ who looks when God looks at us he just sees the blood of his son the blood of the sacrificial lamb the blood that the, our high priest has gone and sprinkled on the mercy seat that's what God sees and for this reason we need to bear with one another we need to be patient with one another we need to be long suffering with one another realizing that i am where i am not because i'm a good person but by the grace of god and understanding the word brings humility and not pride understanding the word makes us strong in our faith because it becomes our foundation it becomes our base it becomes our anchor and when we are truly anchored in Christ. We are not so easily tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes alone. We are not easily tossed to and fro by the calamities or the pressures or the circumstances that come our way because we are anchored. It gives us that stability, that knowledge, that knowing that God has a good plan for my life. God wants to give me a hope and a future. God has no bad plan for me. So whatever else comes my way, God permits it for his own purposes. And with it all, he will make a way out for me. Hallelujah. Then we have peace with God because we understand we have a high priest. We are seated in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. We have a high priest in heavenly places. And when we cry, Abba, Father, he hears us. And even when you, you don't even open your mouth, you sigh, deep sigh. When you have a problem and you are sitting there in your house and you sigh deeply because of the problem, God's already heard you. Before you pray, he says, I've already answered you. Before you ask, I've already answered you. How come? Because he watches over you. He listens to you. He sees your anger. He sees what you're going through. That's the high priest that we have in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. You know, I was reading the Psalm 110. I want to take you through that. Psalm 110 verse 1 to 4. It reads, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So God made Jesus' enemies his footstool. And what did Jesus say to us? Fear not, little flock. I 
have overcome the world for heaven is my throne the earth is my footstool and is it a wonder that he has put all his enemies under your feet hallelujah they are all under your feet you shall trample upon the scorpions upon the others you shall trample upon demonic forces because jesus has put them under your feet because he he has victory over them and he has given us that victory and he has put the enemy under our feet next time you are dreaming being chased by lions or snakes wake up and say to yourself hey you are, these things are supposed to be under my feet i'm supposed to trample on them and they have no power to harm me because jesus said nothing shall by any means harm you he has put the enemy under our feet this too says the lord shall send the rod of this of thy strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of thy enemies so jesus rules in the midst of of his enemies and what has he done he has given us power over all the power of the enemy because he wants us to rule in the midst of the enemy he wants us to rule in the midst of his enemy as it is written in the book of Psalm again, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's what he does. He wants you to sit at peace and enjoy the blessings of God in the presence of your enemies because he has put your enemies under your feet. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? The trouble church is that we read these things, we memorize these things, but do we believe in them? Do we really believe in them? Because if we begin to believe in these things, we are going to walk in power, greater power than we have experienced before in our lives. When we understand what God has done for us, he has made us rulers over his inheritance. He has given us power over all the power of the enemy. He has given us keys to the kingdom. We can unlock any door. He has said, go in my name because you have believed. Others will also know that I live when they are set free from their bondage because you have the key to unlock any door. You have the power to break chains. You have the power. Hallelujah. I guess I hope I'm talking to somebody tonight. I hope I'm talking to somebody tonight. Is there anybody who wants to be empowered by the Lord? Is there anybody who wants to understand your positioning in Christ so that when the enemy tries to come against you, you can tell the enemy it is written. You are under my feet. I have the power over you. Jesus has given me authority to trample upon you and your scorpions and all your demon forces. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has given us the keys to open, to lock and to unlock doors. He has given us power to forgive. He has given us power, hallelujah, to bind and to loose. Thank you, Lord. Thy people, verse 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Woo! Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Are you one of his people? Are you willing for this is the day of his power? Are you willing? Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. His people are willing people. His people are yielded people in the spirit. Are you one of his people who is willing, who is yielded to what God wants to do? Who is saying, God, here am I. Send me. God, here am I. Use me. I have no fear in me. For it is written, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Where do you get your boldness? Not to fear witches. Not to fear Satanists. Not to fear whatever comes your way you get your boldness from understanding the role that jesus has in protecting you the role that jesus has in standing before the father 
on your behalf. Hallelujah. When we understand that we are never alone, he goes before us. He is his goodness and his mercy is behind us. His favor is all around us and his peace covers our hearts and our minds hallelujah that we can go victoriously and be overcomers because he has overcome hallelujah he has overcome i hope i'm talking to somebody this evening who believes that they are a child of god who believes that this what i'm talking about is for you who believes that Jesus is your high priest, that he is the one who supplies you with the anointing. You know, it comes from God. You know, when we were growing up as young people, we used to uh, time for, you know, an anointed speaker. When the anointed speaker comes to church, we all run to the pulpit that day. What do we want? We want an impartation. We want the anointing. People cry, I want the anointing. I want the anointing. Maybe we get the, the, the anointing that is wrapped off to us from that pastor. But after he's gone, the anointing is also gone you need to go to the source you know that's what the foolish virgins are doing they want to the anointing to be wrapped off them but they don't want to be connected to the source you know if i just give you a little bit of my anointing it's going to run out sooner or later and unless you know where to get it you know they say don't give a man a fish Teach a man to fish and then he'll never go hungry again. So we don't want to pass the, give you the anointing. We want to take you to the source of the anointing. Understand the source of the anointing. When you understand where the anointing comes from, it comes from Jesus, the high priest. He keeps you anointed. He keeps you trimmed. He keeps you in perfect condition he keeps you in perfect order why is jesus doing all this why is he going to so much trouble to do this for you because he has to present you before his father hallelujah he has to present you before his father can you imagine a young man falling in love a rich young man maybe a prince say the prince is falling in love with the pauper a very uh, a, a girl coming from a very poor family she's wearing poor clothes how do you think it's going to take her to meet the queen in that poverty in those poor rags that she's wearing no he will go shopping he will take a shopping find the best people who can do manicures find the best people who can do makeup who can do hair and get her all cleaned up dress her up make her look even teach her how to walk teach her how to 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 get aside before the queen and then when the the woman is ready he will present his wife before the family knowing that she will not be an embarrassment she will not be embarrassed you know that's the same with king jesus he has to present his bride before the father that's why he is going to such an extent to make the bride ready to make the bride holy to make the bride what the bride is meant to be, to make the bride understand power and be able to use that power, to use that authority, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. So we want to understand that the Lord hath sown, that's verse 4, the Lord hath sown and will not repent, the Lord hath sown and he will not repent, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. That is God saying to Jesus, you are a priest forever. So Jesus is a priest forever. He's never going to run out. He is not the employment employee who is going to resign from his post and leave us stranded somewhere along the way. No, it's never going to happen. He will never resign his position 
position. He is never going to get fired from his position. He is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That is making us the royal priesthood is never going to go away. This is who we are. We are the royal priesthood. We are the holy nation. We are the peculiar people. Hallelujah. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. He is coming back for you. He is coming again for you. And all he demands of you is that you yield to his love. Is that you accept his unconditional love. And that you allow him to prune you, to mold you, to make you look the way he wants to present you before his father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when you have this knowledge and you have this understanding, there is a peace about you. There is a comfort about you. You know, you, you, there is a stability about you. Micah 7, 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise again. You know, this is a confidence that this person has. Don't rejoice when you see me falling down because I have a high priest in heaven who will intercede for me and I will rise again. Hallelujah. He will never allow me to go down. He will never leave me where I have fallen. He will lift me up again. And it goes on to say, when... When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. That means when the time of depression, in the time of, uh, of uh, whatever comes your way, there's a trauma, there's a situation, there's a circumstance that comes your way. It is a dark moment for you at that time. You are never alone. You can never sit in darkness because the Lord is your light. Hallelujah. The Lord is your light. The Lord is your light. And I tell you, the light can never be overcome by darkness. Never, ever, ever. And where there is light, darkness is pushed back. Darkness is pushed back. Darkness is pushed back because the light is so strong that light and darkness will never be in the same place at the same time. So, if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. If God be for me, who can be against me? For he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He grants wisdom. When I open my mouth, wisdom comes out. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You know, you don't have to cry and weep and cry. You know, you talk to your father. When you have a relationship with your father, when there's a problem, you don't have to be crying and screaming. You just sigh and he's already there. He already knows. He's seen it before it comes. He knows he watches over you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He is a good, good God. He is a good, good God. We are, you know, at the moment... We can truly say the whole world is sitting in the darkness of COVID-19 right now. And we need to believe that the Lord is our light, that even the darkness of COVID can never overpower the light of God that is in us. The people that have no light, they are now committing suicide. They are now depressed. They are now losing their minds. Everything is going wrong. But those who are in Christ Jesus, he has sustained us. He has encouraged us. He has lifted us up. He has poured out his oil upon us. He has poured out his wine of joy upon us. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we save. He deserve our praise. He deserve our worship. He deserve our faithfulness. He deserves our loyalty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what we are going through in this life as long as we know that God is on our side and that he has good plans for us, plans not to harm us, but plans to give us hope, plans to give us a future. We know even though it looks like there is no future, there is a future because God wants you to have a future. 
Hallelujah. 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 The word of God is a light which enlightens our darkness. This is why Satan doesn't want us to read the word. This is why Satan doesn't want us to understand the word. This is why Satan hates the teaching ministry. He prefers us to preach, 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 preach. He doesn't want us to teach, teach, teach. Because when we teach, people are grounded. People gain more understanding of the word of God. Meanwhile, preaching alone gets us excited. Yes, it gets us in the mood. It gets us excited. Excited. But if there is no teaching to then ground us, to help us to put our roots in the ground so that our roots go deep, sooner or later, when the sun comes out, we dry up spiritually because we have no root, because we have no root. And the devil doesn't mind you being in church without a root. He doesn't mind you going to church and dancing to the nice music Sunday after Sunday. As long as inside you have no word, inside you are empty. When the hard times come, you will find that you have no anchor. You start to drift into the sea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, our high priest, he is here today, he is here tonight, he is watching over you tonight, he is looking for those hearts that are burning for him, those hearts that are desiring, he is looking for that bride that is in love, madly in love with him, that bride that is willing to just give yourself over to him and say, take me as I am. Make me whatever you want to make me. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, our high priest. I want to leave it here for tonight. Next week, I want to continue so that we look at the role of the high priest. What else does he do? What exactly does he do? so that we can understand who Christ is and what his work is doing in within us now. We know he, when he came, he came to die, to be our savior. But what is he doing as our high priest? And what benefits are there for us having a high priest in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Next time you read that scripture, think about it. If I'm in Christ, I'm like a, a, a baby in the mother's womb. Why should I worry? When you, women, you know what it's like. When you were pregnant, did your child ever knock by your womb? Did they knock by your belly and say, Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I'm thirsty. Mommy, I need a toilet. Mommy, I need air to breathe. No, they had everything they needed within that womb. So when we are in Christ, we have everything that we need in Christ. We lack absolutely nothing within Christ. So we are in Christ and he is in the Father. And we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There is no power, no authority from the kingdom of darkness that can have power over us because we are are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, we want to thank you. Father, I pray that you cement this word in the hearts of your people. If they don't need it today, they will need it tomorrow. Mighty God, that Lord, we are anchored in Christ. Let Christ be our solid rock, my God, for every other ground is sinking sand. May we know the God that we serve, for it is written, it is the people that know their God that will do exploit. And Father, we are in the season for exploits and we do not want to be left out, Father. Whatever you are doing in this season, we want to be part of it. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the praise, the glory and the honor. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Don't forget to share with others before you leave. Just share, share, share. If it didn't bless you, it might bless your friend or 